This video includes a paid sponsorship from Novium, but I'll talk more about that later. According to some recently leaked information, Tesla is working on several new 4680 battery chemistries, including one which I believe to be LFP, a lithium iron phosphate 4680 battery. I believe that's in the works. So follow along as I discuss some background and insight into what was recently leaked about these new battery variants. I'm John, and this is Cleaner Watt. Currently, Tesla is only using 4680 batteries in the Cybertruck, their Cybercells. But the plan, as far as I can tell, has always been to use these batteries in several other vehicles. Of course, when they manufacture their 4680 batteries at scale with all of the technologies that they developed, it should be much more cost effective to manufacture these batteries. And since they are larger format batteries, it's easier and more cost effective to actually build the battery packs themselves. So Tesla has a lot of incentives to use these batteries in more than just the Cybertruck. Well, based on a new article that was published on theinformation.com, and I will put a link down below in the video description to this article and recommend that you definitely check it out, Tesla is reportedly working on four new battery types which will be used in various vehicles, including what is referred to as a workhorse cell type, which in my opinion, as I will discuss more about shortly, appears to be a lithium iron phosphate battery cell. With that being said, before I cover details about these new various cell types, this article also shares some insight into Tesla's progress with the dry cathode manufacturing process. I've reported on this previously, but Tesla recently solved the dry manufacturing process for the cathode side of their battery, and they are currently testing these new cells in at least one Cybertruck prototype as they work to mass produce these new batteries with those dry produced cathodes. However, while Tesla has solved the dry manufacturing process for the cathode side of the battery, that doesn't mean they're quite ready to mass manufacture these cathodes. They're apparently still working out some of the wrinkles in the process and working on yield rates. And that's something that was revealed in this particular article. I wanna talk about that specifically, but before I do that, this portion of today's video is sponsored by Novium. Meet the Novium Hoverpin Interstellar, a high-end pin that is inspired by space. And when placed in its base, it appears to be hovering at a 23.5 degree angle, mirroring the Earth's axial tilt. This hover pen interstellar is offered in several different colors, including the space black color that I have, Mars magma, starlight silver, and Neptune blue. For something completely unique, the space black color can be upgraded to include a real embedded meteorite piece, so you can have a genuine piece of outer space sitting on your desk. For those who prefer writing with a fountain pen, Novium offers their hover pen future with a two-in-one fountain pen rollerball configuration. I love my hover pens and I believe you will too. So to find out more, click the link in the video description and enjoy a 10% discount and free shipping to most countries on all hover pens with code CLEANERWATT. Okay, when it comes to the yield rates for Tesla's dry cathode manufacturing process, in this article, it was written, quote, one person with direct knowledge of the matter said Tesla has been losing 70 to 80% of the cathodes in test production. By comparison, leading conventional battery makers lose fewer than 2% of their cells and components to manufacturing defects. Now this doesn't mean that Tesla is losing 70 to 80% of the 4680 batteries that they're building right now. This is just the cathodes in the test production. And that test production, as far as I can tell, is being done at their Fremont factory there on Cato Road. So this is not being done at their Gigafactory Texas facility, this 70 to 80% loss. This is at the test facility. And I'm not 100% sure this is completely up to date, but it appears like it's decently up to date that Tesla is still working on the yield rates for their dry cathodes. With that being said, they appear still confident that they're going to be able to mass manufacture their cathodes with the process that they're using right now. And it still looks like they're moving forward and trying to get this process started at their factory in Texas. Now, previously during Tesla's Q2 2024 investors conference call, Lars Moravi mentioned launching these dry cathode 4680 batteries in Q4 of this year. It looks like that date has been pushed out just a little bit. And I believe this is due to really figuring out how to get those yield rates up. 
Specifically in this article on that topic, it was written, quote, despite the low production yield for the dry cathodes, Tesla is pushing ahead with plans to introduce them in Cybertruck batteries by the middle of next year, according to people with direct knowledge of the matter. So once again, previously, it looked like Tesla was going to try to work them in at the end of this year, but it looks like it's going to be about the middle of next year before we actually see dry cathode batteries in the Cybertruck. So a little bit of a delay and hopefully Tesla is able to meet that, but it looks like they're still confident they're going to be able to actually produce these batteries. In addition, it looks like they're actually working to have a much higher yield rate as soon as by the end of this year, because in this article, it's made clear that quote, Tesla has set goals of improving the dry cathodes yield to 90% by the end of the year and mass producing it by the second quarter of 2025. When it comes to the number of 4680 batteries with these dry cathodes that Tesla actually plans to manufacture next year. In this article, it's written, quote, by next year, Tesla aims to be making between 2000 and 3000 Cybertrucks a week using 4680Ds, more than twice the rate of its current production without dry cathodes, according to one of the people with direct knowledge. Now, in order to put this in perspective, I want to enumerate how many 4680 batteries this equals if Tesla is able to produce enough of these to produce around 2,000 to 3,000 Cybertrucks per week. So, for example, if Tesla is able to produce enough for 2,000 Cybertrucks per week, that's somewhere around 2.688 million 4680 batteries built per week or 384,000 per day, and that could equate to on a yearly run rate, somewhere around 138.24 million battery cells. Or if you turn that into gigawatt hours, that's a run rate of over 13 gigawatt hours of 4680 batteries per year. I did the same calculations on this chart for 2,500 Cybertrucks worth of 4680 batteries. And then if you go to the 3,000 Cybertrucks there, you can see that if you translate that out to a yearly run rate, that would be a run rate of over 207 million 4680 batteries or just a little bit under 20 gigawatt hours of batteries per year. So it looks like Tesla is planning to manufacture quite a few of these batteries next year and hopefully they'll be able to meet that. With that being said, I now want to move into details about the four battery variants that Tesla is apparently working on. And although it's written in this article that these are four new 4680 battery variants, I believe one of these batteries may not be in the 4680 battery size, but actually a smaller size. And I'll talk about that shortly. But nonetheless, in this article, it's written, quote, by 2026, the company plans to introduce four subsequent versions of the 4680 that use the dry cathode. One internally codenamed NC05, NC stands for new cell, and described as the workhorse, will power the robotaxi, which Musk intends to unveil at an event next week in Los Angeles. The battery timeline suggests the robotaxi won't be available until 2026 at the earliest. The fact that this NC05 battery type is being referred to as a workhorse battery makes me believe it's a lithium iron phosphate battery chemistry type that's going to be used in this cell. And this battery type is apparently going to be used not only in the robotaxi, but also to power a version of the Cybertruck, the Tesla Semi, and a fourth unknown vehicle. Now, when it comes to two of the four vehicles that these workhorse battery cells will be used in, the Robotaxi and the Tesla Semi, of course, lithium iron phosphate battery chemistry makes a lot of sense in a commercial vehicle because not only are LFP batteries cheaper, but they're safer, longer lasting, and can be regularly charged to 100%. So they make a lot of sense for commercial vehicles like a robotaxi and even a shorter range Tesla Semi, for example, the 300 mile range Tesla Semi that Tesla plans to bring out in the future. I believe that's going to have lithium iron phosphate batteries that would make a lot of sense for that vehicle. And it would also make a lot of sense financially for Tesla to be able to use their own in-house produced 4680 batteries with LFP battery chemistry in that Tesla Semi. I believe that's what's going to happen here. I believe that's what this NC05 battery cell type is. However, beyond the commercial applications, it looks like Tesla is also going to use these NC05 battery cells in the Cybertruck. I don't believe that they're going to use them in the long range Cybertruck, but for example, Tesla does plan to bring out a shorter range rear wheel drive Cybertruck that's going to get somewhere around 250 miles of range. And I've talked about this in a previous video, 
but I believe it's very possible that Tesla could achieve 250 plus miles of range with lithium iron phosphate batteries. Tesla building their own lithium iron phosphate battery cells also seems to fit in with information that has been revealed in the past. For example, during Tesla's Q3 2022 investors conference call, Drew Baglino mentioned, quote, we're pursuing aggressively North American iron cathode supplies. In addition to that, previously it was reported that Tesla was working to partner with CATL to actually license their battery technology and build a US-based battery factory. Then in late January of this year, it was reported that Tesla would be localizing some lithium iron phosphate battery production with help from CATL. And while the article made clear that these LFP batteries that Tesla would be building at their Gigafactory Nevada facility would be used in their mega packs, if Tesla is indeed building LFP battery cells there, they'll of course have more experience building this specific variant of battery cells and it also means they're going to have to have a supply chain for these materials. So it wouldn't be illogical to assume that they could take some of those materials and also build LFP 4680 battery cells at, for example, their Gigafactory in Texas. So this all seems to kind of fit together, a workhorse battery cell that's going to be used in these commercial vehicles and potentially, I believe, in a shorter range Cybertruck. And I don't know what this fourth unnamed vehicle is, but it could be kind of the Tesla van that looks like has been under wraps and something that Tesla has kind of teased with this image of their future vehicles here. It could be kind of a commercial uh, delivery van, a small delivery van of some type that has lithium iron phosphate batteries. I don't know for sure, but it does look like this workhorse battery cell, in my opinion, is a lithium iron phosphate battery type. Okay, moving on to the next battery type. In this article, it's also written, quote, another variant dubbed NC20 will pack more energy than other versions. The company intends to power a sport utility vehicle, the Cybertruck, and other future vehicles with the NC20. I believe this NC20 battery cell, which apparently has more energy density, could be related to something that Joe Tegmeyer revealed on X back in the past when he revealed that Tesla was working on some new higher nickel battery chemistries. And not only was Tesla working on these higher nickel battery chemistries, but they were also working on some asymmetric lamination, which altogether was expected to raise the energy density of the battery cells using the higher nickel and this asymmetric lamination. Beyond the NC20, this article also mentions an NC30 battery type and an NC50 battery type. And specifically it's written here, quote, the NC30 and the NC50 will introduce a material called silicon carbon for the first time into the anodes. Silicon carbon can hold more lithium than traditional anodes and allows lithium to move in and out more freely, thus improving charging speed. Now, although it's written that the silicon carbon would be added to the anodes of these batteries for the first time, I believe Tesla is already introducing a small amount of silicon into the anodes of their 4680 batteries. That's something that was previously reported on. However, I believe with these new battery cells, they're going to be introducing a much higher percentage of silicon to the anode, which will actually really drastically improve the energy density and the charging speed of these batteries. And of course, this is something that Tesla has been working on for quite some time because this was one of the goals at battery day that Tesla is working on, introducing a good amount of silicon into the anode of their batteries. Now, earlier on, I mentioned that one of these battery types may not be a 4680 format battery cell. And the reason I said that specifically is because in this article, it's also written, quote, the company will use the NC30 in future vehicles, including the Cybertruck and a sedan, while the NC50 is smaller and focused more on performance. So if the NC50 battery cell type is smaller, to me, what that's saying there is that it's not a 4680 battery cell, but it could be like, for example, a 2170 or some other new format that Tesla specifically develops for performance. There is a reason why, not only because of battery supply, I believe there's a reason why the Plaid Model S and the Plaid Model X still use 18650 cells. And I believe that comes down to thermal performance. It's a lot easier to keep a battery with a smaller diameter cool because it's easier to cool the interior of the battery. So I believe when it comes to performance vehicles, and especially vehicles that are not being mass produced, the Tesla Roadster compared to the Model Y and other vehicles is not gonna hit those kind of numbers because it's a much more expensive vehicle. 
So for example, there's not a big advantage in using 4680 batteries in the Tesla Roadster. And in this particular case, I believe because of thermal performance, you would actually do better to have a battery like an 18650 battery format, 2170 battery format in the Tesla Roadster. And it could be a new tabless version of those battery cells that would have even better thermal performance than the current versions of those battery cells being manufactured by Panasonic for Tesla. That would be very interesting. And it looks like Tesla may be working on something like that, but it looks like this NC50 battery cell is going to be a smaller format battery cell, not a 4680 battery cell. I would love to know what you think about all this in the comment section below. And also I wanna say thank you to Novium for sponsoring this video. And thank you to all of those of you who support me through Patreon. Your support makes a big difference and does help make these videos possible. If you'd like to find out more about how you can support my work through Patreon, I will put a link in the video description. Thank you so much.